Hi everyone, I want to welcome you all to POS 201 Introduction to Political Theory. My name is Rob Glover and I am going to be your instructor for this online offering of the course. I teach in the Political Science in the Honors College at the University of Maine and I may have had some of you in um, courses offered live in previous semesters. In fact, I'm looking over the class roster, I, I know that's the case. So, welcome. Uh, primarily what I want to do in this short introductory video is run through the syllabus and my expectations for the course and lay out some of the logistics of the course. As an online course, it's important that you know things like how to access the readings, the discussion board, how office hours will be conducted, etc. So before we start, you might want to print off a copy of the syllabus and have that in front of you. Um, I'll also just mention at the outset that if anything's unclear after watching this video, if there's anything you don't understand how a component of the course is going to work, um, feel free to contact me through email and um, we can get it sorted out. Okay, so the first thing um, that you'll see on the syllabus is my contact information. Um, there you have my email address, my phone number, um, office hours. I'm very, very approachable. I welcome questions uh, from students. So if something is unclear, never hesitate to get in touch with me. Probably the easiest way, the quickest way to get a response from me is through email. If you email me, um, you'll have a response definitely within 24 hours, usually within a few hours. Okay, so... Um, if you call me, it might take a little bit longer to hear back from me. Um, office hours for the class. Uh, let me hop out of PowerPoint really quick and go into first class. Um, so if you go into the first class folder, uh, you will see a link that uh, says virtual office hours. Um, I hold virtual, virtual office hours here. It's basically a chat room. Um, so you can find that link on the front page of the first class site. And those are from Wednesday, uh, on Wednesday from 12 to 2. Um, so if that time doesn't work for you, uh, if you're not available, you're working during the day, uh, please just let me know. We can schedule up uh, another time to meet. And um, although many of you are probably not local, i.e. the Bangor Orono area, uh, if you are and want to meet in person, you'd prefer that, uh, we can certainly do that as well. Just let me know and we can set up a time to meet. So um, that is how to get in touch with me if you know we have an exam coming up and you want to ask some questions. Uh, Wednesday 12 to 2 I will be in here um, or we can schedule another time to meet. Okay. Um, so let me say a little bit about the course. Um, what we study in this class is political theory. Uh, it's an introductory class. Uh, you may have had courses before in political science that um, look at political phenomena and attempt to describe them or explain them or predict their occurrence. And political theory is a little bit different in the sense that it asks normative questions. Uh, and we'll talk in the first lecture more about these distinctions, uh, but basically normative questions, rather than asking why did this happen, or how did this happen, or what variables, what factors caused a certain outcome. In political theory, we ask uh, questions about what ought to be, right? What do we want our political world to be? What is the ideal form of our political world? How should we organize these shared communities that we have politically? What is justice? What does it mean to be free? Uh, what does it mean to be a citizen? What are the responsibilities associated with it? Um, those are all examples of what we call normative questions. There's an ought involved. There's some uh, claim made with regard to what we ought to be doing. Um, now, I'll say right at the outset that this is going to be a challenging class. It's always a challenging class because it requires you to think uh, critically and somewhat expansively, and there aren't easy answers. Um, there's no singular answer to the question, what is justice, or you know, what are the responsibilities of citizens? Um, but it's also just a lot of material. Um, and we do it in an intensive three-week format. Um, you're going to need to read a lot. You're going to need to really be on top of the material for this course. It's very easy to fall behind. And, and please don't do that because it's hard, extremely hard, to get caught up if you fall behind. Um, so how do we study it? Um, basically, we are going to approach this by surveying some of the fundamental uh, philosophical and theoretical texts which shape and guide and inform uh, our contemporary political world. These are texts which, if you are an informed political actor, you're a citizen, you should read because they provide the philosophical foundations for the political system in which you currently reside. 
right? So whether you know it or not, your life is being shaped by these past ideas, these past philosophies, these ways of thinking about your political world, and so you should be exposed to them. So we read in here um, you know, Plato, Machiavelli, Hobbes, Locke, Marx, um, very important influential thinkers who wrote very important influential texts which continue to shape the political system we live in today. My goal in, in this class is to give you kind of a survey of this material. It's, it's dense, there's a lot to it, and I'm really just trying to kind of expose you to some things and spark your interest. Um, it's an introductory class, and what I'm trying to do is show you that there's this whole world of political thought and political debate about fundamental questions of our shared existence, which is waiting for you if it interests you, right? And I understand with an introductory level class, Sometimes you, you take an intro level class and it's like, ah, that's not really my thing. And if this isn't your thing, that's totally okay. But I at least want you to have that exposure to some of these ideas. Um, some of these texts were written hundreds, some of them thousands of years ago. Um, so they can be difficult to sort out. And I'm going to do my best to situate things in relation to contemporary issues. I don't want this to just be an exploration of you know things that old dead guys wrote hundreds of years ago, but I, I want you to realize that this, these ideas continue to impact our world today. Um, you're not going to understand all the material. It's going to be challenging, uh, but my hope is that with my guidance through reading questions and the lectures uh, and, and some of the debate and discussion that happens on the discussion board, that um, it will become more clear that you'll have to struggle struggle with it a little bit, but you'll be able to pull out those really core important ideas from each of these texts. The readings for the course um, are available for purchase at the UMaine Bookstore um, or available online. There's a, a reader that's uh, an overview of political philosophy, sometimes political theory. Uh, we also refer to it as political philosophy uh, by Kahn. There's a uh, novel, actually, that you read a little bit later in the in the the three-week semester um, by Edward Bellamy called Looking Backward, um, also available at the UMaine Bookstore or online. And there's just a few instances in which there's other readings that aren't in either of these books, and those are available uh, electronically through First Class. There's a, a folder on First Class with electronic readings. Um, for every reading that you do, there's a set of reading questions available on First Class. Those are designed to uh, help you focus your reading. The material is complex and there's a lot to it, and I want you to be able to zero in on what is important, what are the most important things to pull out of these challenging readings. Um, so um, that's a basic overview of the readings. If you ever have a question about you know, what, what specific uh, text you should be reading or you can't find one of the uh, electronic readings, you're not sure where that is, um, don't hesitate to contact me. Your grade is pretty simple. Uh, it's composed of four things. There's a midterm uh, that happens uh, in the second week of the semester, and it's worth 25% of your grade. You write a short paper. It's about four to five double-spaced pages on a film that uh, you'll have access to online called The Educators, and that's worth 30% of your grade, in which you'll be applying some of the ideas that you've been exposed to uh, through your analysis of the film. There is a final exam, again, worth 25% of your grade. And lastly, I'll be grading you on uh, your participation in online discussion. Uh, and so I can talk a little bit about that. Um, the online discussions, if you turn to page two of your syllabus, uh, let me say a little bit about these. For every day's reading and lecture, I've posted a short clip to a video. Um, these are largely supposed to be provocative and fun. I know that political theory can be a little bit dry when it's discussed in the abstract. And so these are designed to get you thinking about the implications of theories and concepts in fun and hopefully thought-provoking ways. Um, so we'll be discussing topics like uh, whether Socrates was the original punk rocker or whether Michael Corleone in The Godfather is a disciple of Machiavelli. Um, these sorts of questions that kind of uh, get you thinking and applying some of these ideas, but hopefully, you know, in, in a, a fun and engaging way. Um, so for these, uh, I post an opening question, and then I ask that you respond to my question uh, or the contributions of your classmates or raise a new idea, right? So these are designed to be done after you've done the reading, after you've watched 
my lecture for the day, then head over to the discussion board. And it doesn't have to be um, super extensive. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a 500 word post necessarily. Um, but you should be posting something that shows me that you can apply these ideas, you understand what they mean, and you're actually kind of actively thinking about them. Um, I require that you do at least three quality responses or comments uh, each week, but you're welcome to contribute more if you wish. If you, there's a really interesting conversation going on or somebody has raised a really interesting point and you want to respond and you've already uh, done your three posts, please don't hesitate to jump into the conversation. Um, let me just hop out of here and I'll show you exactly how you do this in uh, first class. So right next to that same link for office hours, there is the discussion board. Uh, and it's broken up into folders, um, which I'll just mention too that this is what it looks like on my computer. Sometimes icons and things shift around um, when you open up first class on your own computer, but this is ideally what it should look like for you. It should be roughly similar. Um, so week one discussion threads, um, you'll see there there's uh, five different sets of readings, five lectures, and then um, five opportunities to respond. Um, the readings uh, and um, I'm sorry, the lectures, the, the clips, and the reading questions are all available in this folder here. So you would be watching uh, for week one and go into week one, day one. Um, and there's a short clip here on um, uh, bipartisanship. Uh, this first class deals with uh, pluralism, something called pluralism, and uh, I think it bears important resemblances to some of the conversations that we have about political discourse today. So if you opened up this video clip, it would open up a, a YouTube video that you would watch, very brief, couple minutes long. Um, and then you could watch that and then hop on over to the discussion board to join the conversation about that clip. So um, the, the key there is just to get you kind of applying and thinking about ideas that you've been exposed to in the class uh, with your fellow classmates. Um, so hopefully that's clear. Like I said, I expect uh, three responses or comments each week. You're free to contribute more. If any of that is confusing, if you're unsure how to do that, um, don't hesitate to be in touch. Okay. Um, the uh, exams are interesting. <laughs> I should talk about them a little bit. So this class uses first class and Blackboard. Um, Blackboard is used primarily for uh, the midterm fi and final exam and um, so that you can track your grades and performance through the grade center. The vast majority, the overwhelming majority of the content and things that you'll be doing in this class are available on um, first class. Um, but twice during our three-week session, you have to head over to Blackboard uh, and take your midterm and final exam, and those are available um, through Blackboard. It's just a better uh, format, a better interface for uh, actually administering an exam somewhat similar to what I would use in a, a live classroom. Um, also, you can track your grades and performance through the Grade Center. So as I grade things, uh, and I try to turn them over pretty quickly, you can follow your progress, follow your performance um, in the Grade Center and get a rough idea of where you stand grade-wise um, so that you can you know, calibrate your um, effort and, and get a sense of my expectations with regard to how you're doing uh, in the class. Those are really the only functions um, that Blackboard, Blackboard has in this class is just to take the exams and to track your progress. And there's a link um, on the, the main course page in first class that will take you directly to um, Blackboard where you sign in and you should all have avail uh, available the Blackboard site for the class. So um, the exams, um, there's there's more uh, it, on the syllabus and, and uh on Blackboard itself about um, how to take the exams, but basically uh, it's it's an online interface, it's an online exam. Um, you get a study guide ahead of time that tells you exactly what to expect. Uh, those are 
available both for the midterm and final exam on first class right now. Um, and then for the midterm, once you open that exam on Blackboard, you have 90 minutes to complete it. It's open book, open notes, um, but you do have to be mindful of the time limit. And if you go over the time limit, there will be point deductions. And for the final exam, exact same format, um, and you have slightly longer to complete it. You have 120 minutes as opposed to 90 minutes. Okay. So hopefully that's all straightforward. Um, you probably have had some exposure to taking an exam in an online format before, um, but that's those are really the only functions that Blackboard has in this course. But just understand that it does the course does use both. It uses first class and Blackboard. Okay, um, the uh, kind of last piece that I want to talk about is the class schedule. At the end of your syllabus, you will see. Um, a class schedule. It's broken out by week and then by day, and there are expectations for um, every day. And like I said at the outset, it's a significant amount of reading, and it's really important that you um, keep up with the reading. Um, I've given you reading questions to, to help you zero in on some of the key aspects of these texts, but you're going to have to read a lot, and you're going to have to read relatively quickly and keep up with the pace of the course. Um, so the class schedule tells you uh, what will be covering on what days, when your exams are, uh, when assignments are due, and most importantly, what you should be reading. And note that the readings listed on a given day are readings that you're responsible for in that day's class. It's not, you know, your homework. Um, but before you watch the lecture uh, on the first day, you should uh, be doing the reading that's listed and then try to digest it. Uh, with the help of the lecture. So watch the lecture after you've done the reading. Um, okay, so um, things I've just said here, um, and obviously like I had said before, um, participation in online discussion uh, should be done after you complete the reading, you watch the lecture, and then you, know, you watch the short video clip that's meant to help you apply uh, the reading and some of the ideas discussed. Okay. Um, so, if there are any questions or anything is unclear, um, please don't hesitate to, to contact me through email. Um, I would suggest just read over the syllabus closely, um, be mindful of important dates. Those things are listed on the calendar that's on the first class site as well. Um, but just have a sense of kind of the pace of the course and what you're going to be expected to do when uh, and when your exams are and when the paper is due. Uh, and, and get a sense of that. And if there's anything just logistically that's, that's unclear, um, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. But as I said, it's really important that you understand how the course is going to work uh, before you move on and uh, start kind of uh, working your way through the content. So um, that's all for now. Please don't hesitate to be in touch if I can be of any assistance at any point throughout the course. I'm really looking forward to... Um, working through some of this material. I think it's um, interesting material that is still incredibly relevant and I, I think that um, we have a, an interesting kind of uh, set of, of readings and, and clips that can help us apply it to contemporary issues and hopefully you find the same. Hopefully you find that uh, your interest is sparked by political theory and you want to go on and take more courses in political theory and engage with some of this material in greater depth. So I'll stop there for now. Um, thanks all of you for watching and I'll be in touch with you soon.